Welcome, welcome to the uh, Knowledge and Ignorance podcast. I am your host, the only elephant in the room worth acknowledging. Question is, how do you talk about something and add something to something that everybody's talking about and that's been covered way too much? Well... I don't know. COVID-19. This is what they like to do. This uh, They, who are they? Like, hey, who are they? Well, you know, the, 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 the communication outlets, this, this is the, the media and the communication. <clears throat> you know, people in charge of communication for the government and fucking, fucking shit, you know what I'm saying? You know, they'll, they'll sort of rebrand stuff. Do you remember, like, ISIS... Started off as ISIS, uh, then Islamic State, uh, and then ISIL, and then Daesh. So I had four names. They sort of do that just to make it seem like um, they're not just re- regurgitating the same same crap over and over again. They didn't do it with Brexit though, which was um, quite surprising actually. Um, uh, I think the whole purpose of Brexit was just to, just to uh, bore you into submission. I think that was the idea. I think they they felt that uh, the only you know they they couldn't uh, overturn the result and get anyone to um, so that's the aircon. Couldn't overturn the result and get anyone to um, you know want to vote again. So I think they figured we'll just bore them into just going yeah fuck it let's just not leave the EU it's it's just too boring now. I think that was the idea. I think that was the strategy anyway. Um, well, it didn't work, did it? But you can't fault people for trying, I suppose. So what can be said about something that no one will stop talking about? Well, for one, let's, let's break it down. The fact is they won't stop talking about it. I think we're living in the most reflective time where it is painstakingly obvious that we just have to keep the same, we just have to all be focused on one thing that perpetually sort of divides us and tears our life apart and turns everything upside down and scares people. We had Brexit for three years and you know the, the fear mongering over Brexit was quite fascinating from outbreaks of super gonorrhea to an increase in dogging um, at UK ports. That was an actual thing. I did a video on it because someone said their fears that more truck drivers will be dogging because of Brexit. You know, food shortages. Is this family familiar? Food shortages. (laughs) Financial crash. A lack of goods. Healthcare going down the fucking swanee. Well, here you have the replacement. This is this is COVID nineteen. This is Corona. This is the replacement. Now look, we're not going to go into the whole thing about um, cons- conspiratorial nonsense on this one because um, you could easily pay- you could easily piece together a nice juicy conspiracy theory about the whole thing. Um, but this time you couldn't blame the globalist Illuminati, uh, because this is definitely one of the most anti-globalization um, occurrences that I've seen for quite a long time. You know, the sort of the... Uh, this is the problem with it. The the, the threat, the threat of um, Islamic terror that we lived under in the uh, Age of Fear, and also the more recent idea of the threat of the rise of the far right and uh, the rise of bigotry and fascism you know and these ones are sort of more subjective because you know even when we were afraid of islamic terror all right we did have some incidences but not a lot in comparison to the 70s which was a golden age of terrorism um 
has like not not nearly as half as many um, attacks across Europe. It's just um, more imaginative ones, and also by people who. Um, you know, a lot of people who were actually citizens of the country. That's the kind of different thing we had. You know, we had people who were born in Britain, you know, and going off to fight in Syria for ISIS, uh, which was an unusual thing to see. Uh, but for the most part, the, the looming f threat of these groups, the looming threat of ISIS, you know, marching towards the shores of Britain, like Hitler and his boys, um, didn't fully believe it. Even if you were scared of it, you didn't fully think it was going to happen. I don't think everyone was like, oh, this is, they're going to be here, they're going to be here, they're going to kill us all. It's, I think part of your brain, I think like there's, there's still like 20 to 30% um, of your thoughts were like, nah, probably not. I think there's a hell of a lot of doubt inside your mind, the populace of the, of the nation, that's what I'm saying. I think people, deep down it's like going, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. You know, the the whole concept of Britain being taken over and uh, being ruled by Sharia law. Um, you know, sounds terrifying. Uh, but I don't think that many people really believe it. Not really believe it. Kind of like the people that like to believe Tupac's still alive or Elvis is still alive. I don't think they all really believe it, but they like the idea of it. The idea They believe in the idea of it. But actually believing it's a real thing, I think, is a bit different. And I would say the same with uh, the rise of the far right. It suits people who like to um, fear-monger us into submission. Um, and the people that do believe it, or believe it's actually happening, aren't that concerned about it. I would argue to the same extent, the same thing with climate change. As loopy as people are acting, you know, getting naked on uh, Westminster Bridge... And blocking traffic with their horrible breasts out, you, th you think, all right, well, they must believe quite strongly in this. It's like, mm. no, believing Donald Trump is a fascist dictator. Mm. I don't think they truly, not truly believe it. Because if you really did believe, especially the Donald Trump thing, if you, and Boris Johnson, that, you know, with the proud history of fighting fascism and, uh, you know, naughty groups of people um, that Britain has, you know. And we took the Nazis quite seriously. A lot of people died. Um, so if you actually believe, if you really do believe in this kind of thing, um, you're not doing very much about it. You know, g going on a little march in London um, with your kids in the pram, with silly balloons, with your face painted, isn't fighting fascism. You know, the, the, the looming threat of um, tyrannical genocide. Um, that doesn't seem to be bothering you that much because I think you take it a bit more seriously. They're going, yeah, I've got a day off work, gonna drink some gin and go fuck Donald Trump. Not, not actually fuck him, but you know, just shout it in the street. So I don't think you truly believe him. But something like this though is, um, it's not that subjective. It's the disease is there. Lots of people have got it. In the, well, not lots, but enough. For people to go, oh shit! There's the problem. You you're already willing to give up your civil liberties for the, the looming threat of this imag of these imaginary bogeyman that we've had, who who aren't that much of a threat to us at all. A lot of people were quite willing to give up a lot of rights. You know, the people who'd be absolutely fine with being spied on by their own televisions, with your mobile phone devices listening to you constantly. You know, government agencies being granted all these powers because of the looming threat of something you don't 100% think is that big a deal. But the idea of it is enough for you to go, and yeah, that's fine, well, I'm not committing any terrorism. Yet. Because um, you don't know how they're going to move the goalposts, do you? Like I said, I'm not going to go into a conspiratorial thing about this. I'm just saying, you, when you're scared, suddenly you're very willing to give up lots of things that you should hold dear to you. And that's the worrying thing. 
then that's what's happening. No, thousand pound fine. Thousand pound fines for not quarantining yourself if you have symptoms. They're going to arrest you and quarantine you because you're ill. We have a disease that the numbers are skew with. Because there'll be a hell of a lot of people, and this is guaranteed there's a hell of a lot, there'll be a hell of a lot of people who won't even know they've got it. They think they'll just have a cold. It's cold season. It's still very cold in the UK, as it is across Europe. You know what I'm the, well, if they knew the exact numbers, the fatality rates would be different. They'd be different. And I think that is, that is kind of the case. That some people will, will get it and won't show all the symptoms uh, that they've heard about and won't think anything of it and then they'll just get over it and yet people are fine with being told to stay indoors not go to work, not earn money you've got people who think everything should be shut down which is a guaranteed way to plunder us into a worldwide recession we've already got airlines you know, toying with the idea of bailouts already for the foreseeable future. No public gatherings. No public gatherings. Do you know what kind of regimes don't, didn't like big public gatherings? The Communist Party of China, for one. <clears throat> Who had a thing, because, you know, obviously the, the, the Communist regime was started by uh, Mao and a few of his buddies hang out at tea shops. And they got something in China where you can't be in tea shops in larger groups of three or four or something like that. Because that's how you start a revolution. You know. They know because they did it. Big groups. Military dictatorships across the world throughout the decades didn't like big concerts being organized. They didn't like big, big name bands arriving. Thousands of people all singing in unison lyrics that they don't understand because they're like, This is too powerful. This many people coming together for one sole reason is a problem to overthrow us. I'm not saying that's what's happening, I'm just saying when you allow fear to make you go, Yep, yeah, that's fine, it will ban, yeah, 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 ban all travel, no public, you know, no congregating in public. No going out. No mixing with large groups of people. By shut down work. Oh, and we should also, Jeremy Corbyn's going to write a letter to the government saying, yeah, we need to give money to all these people when we're not generating any money. All these things are apparently fine. <clears throat> this is just what I'm saying. You've allowed you, when you become that fucking scared because of the constant news cycle being regurgitated and you're part of the problem too because you're regurgitating it yourself I can't like <clears throat> Facebook's insufferable as it is and now like the, 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 this is the first time that I've wanted everyone to be talking about Brexit again that's insane because think how long that went on for and it only and that talk hadn't really gone away, but it had died down a little bit. Because it's happened now. But what it's been replaced with. And the memes, I mean, the memes aren't even funny anymore. Because they're just the same one, just involves toilet roll and shit. You know, the early ones was alright when it's about eating bats and shit. But now, when the only jokes you can make are about one thing, the only thing you can talk about is one thing, there's only one thing you can talk about. Because you've been conditioned into it now. It's like, it's the only thing you can talk about. You can't not talk about it. Look at me, I'm talking about it now. I don't want to fucking talk about it. But I have to make this point. Suddenly, the whole world is condensed down into one issue and one issue only. Everything else doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. It doesn't matter that you're going to get fined a thousand pounds. That's fine, because we don't want the disease to be spreading. You know AIDS, yeah. Remember AIDS? Remember HIV and shit? Do you remember that? I don't remember people being too concerned about AIDS. 
How is it now with this disease comes along that has a low mortality rate to be at, at the best? How are you okay with the police being allowed to bang on your door and ask you if you're showing symptoms and if you're if you're self-isolating? Then arrest your ass and they'll charge you a thousand pounds. I mean, why weren't you cool with the police kicking in the doors on people who are having sex who don't know each other that well and saying, have you used a condom? Where's the, where's the condom police? You know, I don't, I don't remember too many people being, being concerned about strapping up their filthy penis when they're going on their lads tour to Magaluf and just fucking everything that moves. Spreading about venereal diseases, spreading HIV, spreading hepatitis, spreading syphilis, spreading gonorrhea, crabs. I don't remember you being too concerned about that. With your filthy, disease-riddled penis. I don't remember you having too much concern about wearing a fucking condom. As you inject your unwanted seed into the stomach of an irresponsible clown who just keep pumping out babies because we got to fucking pay for it. Well, not me. I'm a tax, I'm a tax dodger. But you're paying for it. I don't remember too much concern being about that. All these kinds of things. Do you know what I'm saying? You, you dirty fuck. I mean, you're at home, coughing your lungs up, and you went to work anyway. Spread whatever it was you had to everybody. When you let your kid, who's got diarrhea, go in the swimming pool, and then give everyone else diarrhea. Yeah, that happened somewhere I worked. Dirty little bastards. The dirty parents who let the kids swim in the pool and give everybody diarrhea. All the staff, all the other kids, the parents. You dirty fucks. Are you cool with that happening? Why weren't the police kicking your door in and going, do you want to wash your fucking hands? Don't send your kid to school. And do you know why? Because you, you should be doing those, you should be responsible enough. So then we reach a point of, I don't know, do you want a totalitarian government to keep you in line? Because it seems like that's what you need, because you can't do anything else without one. So maybe that's why you're, you're fine with this kind of thing, because you need it. You, you can't take care of yourselves, you can't be responsible, you can't wash your fucking hands. You can't even put a fucking condom on. You're that irresponsible. So maybe you do need this, I don't know. Do you? Well maybe your brain's clouded with so much insignificant bullshit that you've forgotten about all just the simple things that you should be doing in life. And you sort of just push them to the side. And just wandering around, thinking that someone else will sort it out. Oh, it's alright, someone else will take care of that. I don't need to think about these kind of things. The government's there to do that. You've you just grown up into a bigger baby. Well, the government will take care of everything. Oh, just the government are in charge. I don't need to teach my kids about sex education. Uh, school will do that. Like you, you've, you've left everything to be done by someone else instead of taking responsibility for yourselves. Amazing, isn't it? We've been absolutely, we've been, the nanny state does exist. It's not just a thing old people say, oh, it's the nanny state. It's real. Like, it's, it's, as, it's as big, it's as true, it's true, it's true, you let it happen, this is why you can't talk about anything else, there's only one thing to talk about, because they've conditioned you to only think about one thing, you can't think about anything else, like you, do you know what I mean, you can't think enough for yourself to wash your fucking hands and cough into a handkerchief, when you're ill, you don't want to be mixing with other people because it spreads it about. That's why you don't go to fucking work. Now, I know there's ones out you, hey, I'm one of them, you know, I want to soldier on, can't afford to lose the money. But it ain't all about you. It's about the whole ecosystem of the whole place. And when it takes this bullshit to make you go, oh, oh God. Yeah, that's right, my God. Whilst you're running around with your dick out in Benidorm, Sticking AIDS inside fucking fifteen-year-olds. Now suddenly you're suddenly you're uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Conscious. Oh yeah, well that's awful. We shouldn't be doing that. Right, fucking please. 
Good God. The totalitarian state is for you. It's not for me. It's for you. All right. But don't be bringing it upon me. Just because you've decided that you can't be fucked to take care of your own shit. And that you need, you need to be constantly supervised and told what to do, what to think, what is right and what is wrong. Because you can't think for yourself anymore. Doesn't mean that people like me need that shit, okay? You can go live in your little world. That's fine. Create a separate state for all of you. You go live there and I'll live somewhere else. That's absolutely fine. Because it seems like it's you that needs this. It's not me. January, my friend. I heard all, you know. I was like, what do you need to do? Face masks will help you spreading it around. And washing your hands will be very beneficial. Right, and not touching your face. After you've been out, it's like, okay, I'll do that. Been doing it for three months. Okay? Do you know why? Because I just looked into it. We've gone from this is, and this is the worst part of it. It's gone from people being absolute bell ends, perpetuating the propaganda that's being thrown out there by the Chinese government, like being useful idiots on social media, going, "Well, flu and influenza and blah 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 blah." It's like, okay, all right, yeah, fair enough. But you're not quite taking this. You're not quite thinking about the whole implications of all of this stuff going on, that's been going on because this keeps happening. And it's obviously going to build up to something super major bad. <clears throat> and then as soon as it hit shore, then suddenly it, it wasn't like it was over here. It just went <laughs> and then it went 365,000 miles per hour into loony time. Where you're, just, where you're ransacking shops and stocking up for a nuclear apocalypse. Like there's, there's, no, there's nothing here. There's nothing in the middle anymore. It's either over here or it just goes full-blown. There was no chill period. It's when, oh, we're full-blown spastics now. Sorry. I'm sorry. I woke up. Yesterday I was a sensible person, um, but I was a complete non-believer. But today I'm a complete believer. And um, I've, all my kids have drunk poison Kool-Aid and they're dead. And the, the spaceship's coming to take them to the better place. That's how you've gone, man. Like, what the fuck? And it's because you've been conditioned into it. Social media's got a lot of, uh, lot of fault. Yeah, there is a lot of fault there. Because you think 10 years ago with the whole swine flu thing, which is pretty big, uh, it wasn't this bad. But we've, we've fully deep dived into the rabbit hole of bullshit with social media. And that's why social media is, you just can't even go on it. You can't even escape the nightmare that's been, the, the nightmare that's been perpetuated and ramped up by the media is now inescapable because you're all useful idiots and they're all just regurgitating it over and over again because you can't help because you've just been conditioned to only talk about one fucking thing when there's so much other shit going on all the time there's stuff going on all the time I don't know if you know you, like I said you didn't have no concerns about HIV you go all go around f like so many people just throwing their dick around not strapping it up it's disgusting you're, you're vile people you the your disease spread in filth pigs. And I hope you burn in hell. <laughs> but, but seriously, like <coughs> seriously. Seriously, think about AIDS babies and shit. Like what? You dirty fucks, the lot of you. This is what it takes. Because there's a hell of a... Because it's... Cause now you're going to have to realise, like, oh, yeah, there are a lot of things to think about when it comes to cleanliness and it comes to not spreading shit around and when it comes to being good to our fellow man. It's like suddenly, like, oh, my God, there's all this stuff I need to think about. There's loads of shit you need to fucking think about. All right? But you've just... You've allowed everything to be taken over by governments, by authorities. The police have to sort out all our problems. You can't even have a row with a neighbour without the police stepping in. Do you know what I'm saying? You can't even call someone a cunt in the street and then call you a cunt back. And the police are going to have to get involved. Well, it's verbal assault. What did you say? Oh, there's some sort of hate crime going on there. 
And the police are fucking involved. Well, because we can't fucking be uncivil to each other and it not be a problem. If I want to go around calling people a cunt all day, I will. That's my right. Because you're all cunts. So therefore, I will call you what you are. Like, let me call in the police. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's like we've just surrendered everything. It's like, oh, the, the government will take care of it. What do we do? When it, everyone's like looking for answers. What do we do? But what do we do? What do we do? Why aren't the government telling us exactly what to do? It's called common sense. You're born with free will and a brain. That's what you do. You think and just learn. There's education out there. You just wait for stuff to come to you instead of looking it out. That's why you constantly get fed misinformation. That's why shit gets passed around Facebook and Twitter all the time. That's complete bullshit. Because you don't go look for it. You wait for it just to come and slap you in the face. Going, hey, have you heard about the flat earth? That's what you do. You just wait for this shit to come to you. And that's why you absorb nonsense. Instead of just going out your way and going, hey, do you know what? I'm feeling a bit ill today. What's that all about? Should I be, uh, should I be around the kids? Should I go to work? So, hey, I've never met this girl before. Should I put a condom on? No, that's too much effort. What did the government say? I can't remember. Really? You need someone else to do every fucking thing for you. To do all your thinking. And then you're fine with it going, Oh, but what if people... (laughs) If someone's coughing and spluttering near you, tell them to fuck off home and walk away from them. Okay? It's it's kind of simple. It's, it's it's very basic. You can dish out your own justice. We don't need the police kicking in doors and going, Hey, if you got the flu, let me take your temperature, right? You're coming with me. Do we really need that? My goodness. But you're fine with it. Champion it. Don't go outside after dark. There's a curfew on now. Everyone must stay in their home. Everyone stay in their homes. Because people are coughing. And old people might die. Like I said. There's people going around. Fucking with no condoms on. Spreading all kinds of diseases. What do you want to do? Hmm? Do you want the police to be kicking in your door? For a rough ride in? Hmm? What would you want? And then it gets to an even worse state. Because they have to politicise everything. Um, And so they've somehow managed to politicise this as well, even though this is just biological warfare. Well, austerity. Well, Owen Jones will write his article. Well, he did write an article saying, well, this will show that in the end, inequality will kill more people than the... Like, something like that. It's like, shut up. It doesn't matter who, it, and this this just reveals it all. It doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter what the plan is, because there's no best plan. There's no, there's no easy options when you've decided that this thing needs to be stopped. There's no real easy options. It's not, and it's not straightforward. No one thought about this kind of thing, whereas uh, it's quite clear out here in Southeast Asia for sure. And in China, that you know, they're kind of more prepared for these things, regardless of what you think of what that happened in China. Well, that's obviously some other shit. But in terms of them being prepared for this kind of thing, well, they're kind of used to it by now. So they're a bit more prepared. But the point is, this is fully revealed that it doesn't matter what someone did; it's who did it. And that's it. But the political spectrum has become like football. Okay. Because there's a Real Madrid supporter. Are they going to say who, who who's the greatest, Ronaldo or Messi? A Real Madrid supporter. Most likely he's going to say Ronaldo because he plays for the right fucking team. This is what it's gotten to. It doesn't matter about the actions. It's who did the actions. Do you know what I mean? I was raped. I wasn't actually raped. This is just this is me doing an example. Extreme ones. My dad always liked these extreme examples of mine. Miss you, puppy. 
I was raped. Oh, really? Yeah, but by who? Oh, Lionel. Oh, Red Lionel. Yes, Red Lionel. Oh, the leader of the Socialist Party. Yes, Red Lionel. Oh, well, then that's fine. Oh, that's okay. That's perfectly acceptable. You probably deserve to get raped. That's it. That that just sums that little anecdote there. That whatever that is, whatever that is, I just did that. That's what it is. That's you. Yeah. Who, who raped you again? Who and what is he? Is he? Is he? Who did he vote for? David Cameron. Oh, then he's a terrible rape. Well, then he deserves to go to prison. Oh, but then he voted Jeremy. Oh, but then he voted Jeremy Corbyn in the next election. Oh, well, he's not too bad. He was probably just. Um, you know, you probably just misinterpreted the way he had that knife held against your throat in the back of a van with all his mates with their penises out. That's, that's what it was. That's what it is. It's so retarded. That's what we've been conditioned to. It's just over here or over there. There's nothing in the middle anymore. There's no, there's no thinking. None of it. It's all gone out the window. It doesn't matter what it is. It's who did it. It's a popularity contest. This is my crew against your crew. This is worse than... People go on about how they don't understand postcode wars in London. Do you know what I mean? This used to baffle people. Oh, these postcode wars? It's not like gang warfare is anything new. It existed long before they came up with the term for postcode wars. You know, going, going way back to the days of the elephant boys. <laughs> and God knows who else. You know, Millwall versus West Ham. Whatever it is. There's people like... Oh, you know, people middle class and above just go, I just don't understand these postcode wars. Like, It's just very silly. These postcode wars. They're, they're killing each other because of a postcode. And then roll on a few years later and you won't speak to family members because they voted Brexit. You know what I mean? Which is more retarded? You're from... Let's say, look, I used to live in SE5, okay, but I lived right at the edge of SE5, like towards the elephant side. Um, and where I was living, if you crossed over to one side of the road, you were in SE11, right, so sort of Kennington. Um, and then if you want, so so the road's here, uh, so if, if you went, like, west of that road, you'd be in SE11. If you went north, you'd be in SE1. Elephant postcode. So it's right at the edge of the Camberwell postcode. SE5. So it's three, three a corn, on a corner. Three different postcodes going on. And I never see any postcode war shit going on there, but it goes on, but in other places. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know. When I, when I see kids in the street, I cross the other side of the road because I don't buy drugs anymore. Um, but it, it's going on. It's like going, well, this is very retarded if you're going to fight people from over there. That kind of shit does go on. So you think, well, you know, SE11 versus SE5, I mean, what's, 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 that's just fucking stupid, do you know? But then, I voted to leave Europe, you voted to stay in it, which is more retarded. To, because you, you'll think, well, of course, of course, falling out over voting for Brexit, because Brexit is very important. It ain't worth falling out over, is it, really? Not really. Politics shouldn't be dictating your relationships with your fellow man. Your relationships with your family. Fucking hell no. Unless you definitely are supporting um, an actual neo-Nazi organisation that murders its people. Now, I can imagine in the former Yugoslavia, people having a bit of a problem with certain political allegiances during the whole you know, genocidal phase of it. I could see that being something that drives a... A wedge between family members, okay? But um, I would say just leaving the European Union um, isn't that deep. But you make it that deep. And it's worth falling out with friends and family over and uh, not speaking to them again. Well, brilliant. Good for you. Well done. Divide and conquer. You know, it's such an old cliche, but it's fucking true. Divide and conquer. Keep people in the ghetto. Keep people from questions. Do you know all these things are true? 
For the first time reading about this kind of thing, when I first read Machiavelli, when I first read Sun Tzu, and then I read Robert Greene, and I read and I read and I read, and I was like, ah, this is what they do. And it's never stopped being what it is. I've gone, you know, I've gone from back in 2008, first seeing Zeitgeist and thinking, my God, the global puppeteers of the world are in charge of everything. And then I did my own research. Do you know why? Because I thought that was the best thing to do. Then I just go, oh, most of this is bullshit. And eventually I was like, all right, there is no Illuminati. You know, I've, 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 I've changed my mind. I've, I've, I've grown and I've developed. And a lot of things have changed. And I see the world very differently. And I realize a lot more things. And I've matured and grown. But the teachings in these books and and... The, the teachings of the past, from the art of seduction to the 48 laws of power, to the prince, to the art of war, to whatever, whatever the fuck. Uh, when you look around you, that shit never changes. There's constant examples of all this stuff. It's all fuck. It's just always going on. That has always been a constant. And my suspicion of authority and just the blatant misuse of power and the blatant misuse of power by the media <clears throat> I've been seeing that shit since I was like it's fucking a child that's never changed that's never changed see some things are always true and are always facts but the difference is I'm not one of these people who are going to be out there going oh they manufactured this disease to enslave us uh, people are opportunists. Everything's an opportunity. You know, like the people who invested in hand sanitizers and sold them. They're no different to the people who bought Vuvuzelas before the World Cup um, in South Africa. Do you remember that? There's a guy who made a killing on Vuvuzelas. The most annoying, the most annoying um, paraphernalia to do with any sporting event ever created. Um, but, you know. These people are opportunists. Oh, there's some money to be made here. Yeah. There's always opportunity in everything. I've been trying to work out how I can cash in on this shit, you know what I mean? When you think the government's not going to cash in on it? You think the authorities aren't going to cash in on it? Really? You don't think people are, everyone's an opportunist? You're just too dumb. Well, you've been dumbed down. The, the internet has given us many great things. It's uh, it got us away from the idiot box. You know the idiot box is the television. I mean, that's the worst one of all. You know, the newspapers are fucking trash. The TV is trash. Um, but unfortunately, you choose to spend most of your time on the internet on trash websites. Facebook's trash. The YouTube algorithm can pump trash into you if you, uh, if you allow it to. Uh, there used to be a time when you just go looking for stuff, but now it just gets regurgitated and spat in your face. Twitter's trash. You're spending too much time in a wonderful... It's like you've gone to the Garden of Eden. No, not the Garden of Eden, because that all went to itself. You've, you've arrived at paradise, but obviously every place has to have some sort of functionality. So paradise has to have a good irrigation system. You know, the toilets are going to be very nice, um, but all the... Sh the sewage is going to have to go somewhere, even in paradise. The sewage has to go somewhere. And you've arrived in paradise, and you've chosen to spend your entire time in paradise at the sewage works, and just just diving into uh, vats of poo and piss and, and AIDS. And AIDS come because you can't put a condom on. That's where you choose to spend your time. So I would say leave the sewage plant and uh, go spend some time, you know, at the, the Bridge of Dreams. You know, go somewhere else. And go on my Twitch channel and watch me live streaming. It's a bloody hoot. We have a right good time. Whatever, but just stay away from the sewage works in paradise. <laughs> you're, at the, you're at the Library of Enlightenment. You have everything available to you. You go to the the um, I don't know the twat section. This is the twat section. It's just leaflets. 
it's leaflets. It's not even books. It's just crappy leaflets with bad design on it. I'm like, oh, here it is. Ten ways to improve your stupid face. Uh, that's what you're doing. <sighs> yeah, the paradise analogy is way better. Stick with that one. Uh, you, you just gotta, you gotta do better than that. Yeah. And just think about an idea. It doesn't matter who created the idea. Because you're just going to be one of these, you know, is it a good idea? Are they doing the best they can? Do they know, do I, you know, instead of going, well, whose idea was it? Oh, I don't like it. You know, because you're acting like, you're acting like a little bitchy girl at work. You know, someone who's 19. You just, you know those bitchy little girls again? Oh, she's such a slag. I hate that handbag. The secretly, it's like, it's a handbag they've got, but they're never going to wear, they're never going to go out with that handbag again, because she's got it. Oh, she's got it. Oh, fuck her. Oh. You know, they could be in love with some bloke. They're pining for him. Writing poems about him every day. Then someone they hate fucks him. And then they'll never want to go near him again. Could be the best thing that ever happened to him. He was the best. He could have been the father of all my beautiful children. But then he slept with her, and now I hate him. That's what you like. You know, they'll cure cancer, and you go, well, who cured it? Oh, what is it? What, it was pioneered by a conservative think tank? I don't think so. I'll just have the cancer, please. You've got people out here who are hoping the coronavirus will bring down the government. You're hoping that it will crash the economy in America because you have so much disdain for these people. Like, you're fucking... You're, you're warped, man. You, you, you ain't wired right anymore. You've been wired wrong. This wasn't from birth. This is what they've done to you. They've conditioned you. And then they're going to come to you and go, it's okay, we'll take care of everything. That's the smile they give you. Oh, you're having problems. Look at this face I'm doing, and you tell me this is the person you should be taking things from. I see. You're on hard times, aren't you? Oh dear, what's that? Oh, you can't work. We'll take care of everything. That's okay. No, you don't need to think about a thing. We'll take care of everything. No, don't worry. We'll take care of your children. We'll educate your children. We'll tell your children everything. About sex, about life, everything. Your children, don't worry. Leave your children with us and we'll take care of everything. We'll take care of your health. What do you need to do tomorrow? Don't worry. We'll tell you everything you need to do. That's who you're trusting. Someone with that face. You're going, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You've, you've let them control everything. And, and now they're like, oh, stay indoors. Or we're going to kick your door down and arrest you. Yes, of course. Well, we we do, we don't want people getting the sniffles. What the fuck. I'm saying I'm, I'm like I'm saying I'm saying these are easy decisions to make. I understand. I get it. But I'm saying, think about it for goodness' sake before you start going. Yeah, that's fine. I'm scared, therefore that's fine. Far right groups and far left groups recruit people in exactly the same ways. It's all the same. Everyone thinks it's, f it's through hatred. Oh, you lost your job because these bloody, because these bloody banana-eating bastards came over and stole them all. That's the typical narrative that you get told. Uh, that's how the far right recruit people. No, it's through fucking fear. Don't forget the fear aspect of it. That's what the far left do too. The fear. There's a, the, the bogeyman of fascism's here, did you not know? Really? Yes, it's in Poland and Hungary, and it just, it's eating uh, migrant babies. Oh, my God. And for all of this, there's still people trying to virtue signal their way out of this. Because this is the thing. This is like a proactive thing. You can't just... This is kind of one of the good things about it, I suppose, because... You can't disguise this bogeyman. You can't go around going, he's part of it. He's part of it. And just convolute some story. Just because someone says something you don't like, you can't virtually signal your way on Twitter and go, look, he's he's part of the, he, he, he's the bogeyman. There's the bogeyman. He's evil. He's bad. You can't do that when it's a fucking disease. You know, you can't look very virtuous because this is a very much a, an action versus just talking scenario, isn't it? You're going to have to actually go do something. Instead of just talking, going, well, he's a racist and racism's bad. It's like, well, what are you doing about it exactly? 
How are you ending racism proactively, except talking about it constantly? So, I, I don't know. Well, what, what have you done? Done anything? Did you, did you leave your job so a black person could have it instead? No, oh, I didn't think so. Okay. Well, all right. Okay. All right. Well, good for you. You can't virtually signal your way out of this problem. Oh, what are you doing for coronavirus? Uh, I'm telling people to wash their hands. Fuck off. You staying indoors? You being nice to old people? You giving them their, your fucking... You going around buying toilet roll for the old? You doing that? You, do, you doing that? You making sure that old people are okay? You know, the most vulnerable? You doing that? You going door to door? Seeing if they're okay? With a mask on and not shaking hands with them? Hey, you all right? Oh, Miss, Mrs. Goggins, are you okay? You're 96. I'm worried. You doing that? No, of course not, because cause you can't put that on Twitter, can you? Doesn't look cool. You know, smash the patriarchy, though. That's fine, but, but you, know, you didn't go check on old Mr. Dingle. He's fucking 89. He's got no relatives, nothing. Can't, he doesn't know what the fuck's going on, because he's senile. He just knows he went to Asda and there's no toilet roll. Or soap. Or fucking bread. And he's like, what the fuck? Is it the Blitz again? Because he's old. He thinks he's he thinks he's twelve, and it's the Blitz. Oh my God! Is it the Blitz? You, you checked him out lately. No. Did you virtue signal for him? Did you? There's nothing you can do apart from just. Oh, Boris Johnson's fucking this up. That's the only thing you can say about it. You can't go out and save lives, because you're incapable of doing that kind of thing. So you ain't doing nothing, are you? They're not doing anything. So that's the good thing, it's like the virtual signals just have no place in this conversation whatsoever. As much as Owen Jones will try and tell you, oh, austerity is going to kill everyone, and coronavirus was because was, 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 was of austerity, and that's why people die. That's what Owen Jones is going to say. That's probably what he said in that article. I didn't even need to read it, I know what it says. You know, and Ash Sarko and people like that would go, or George Monbiot. They're like, ah, oh, well. You know, bigotry, homosexuals, and Pakistanis are gonna die. Uh, are gonna have more fatalities because the coronavirus is racist. That's the only thing they'll be able to do. Is 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 fucking baffling. That's the most hilarious thing. You go on the Daily Mail or the Guardian. The two, you know, the two main publications of fear. These are the the, the fear. Just call them. These. Are the, you don't need to. Buy magazines like I don't know Tales from the Crypt or, or whatever, whatever journal you you read uh, that gives you the chills, you know your horror, your murder case, but whatever it is, you know your Stephen King, yeah, you know don't need to read your Dean R. Kuntz, you know what I mean? Don't need to, mate. You got you got the day, you got the Daily Mail and the Guardian. That'll, that'll keep you terrified. Uh, Daily Mail is just constantly going. Well, this report says that 93 billion people will die of coronavirus by the year 2022. And then The Guardian, who had their own section on Brexit, will now have a section on coronavirus. In fact, all their opinion pieces have turned from being Brexit, 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 um, Tories, 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 Brexit, 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 bigotry, Brexit, Brexit. Um, And now all coronavirus related, but they're all politically... It's all to do with the political side of the coronavirus, and it's all, you know, it's the conservative government's fault they've got coronavirus. That's pretty much what it says. Like every opinion piece is, you know, they've gone from Brexit to just coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. Who can we blame for it? How can we blame white supremacy, you know, and populism uh, on this, even though globalization clearly has led to the spread of this? Um, but that's a narrative that they're going to have to really ignore aren't they? They're going to have to ignore that one. Um, I'm not an anti-globalization person. Do you know what I mean? Um, rampant globalization, I think, has a, is, is problematic, but they're, like, totally pro it, so they can't be shitting on it. And it's clearly a problem. Is it? Clearly, this is a, a side effect that they never saw coming. You know, I'm sure they could, they can virtue signal their way into some sort of narrative by, you know, stop shaming the victims, stop shaming. 
people are most likely not to shake hands with a Chinaman now. So, okay. Well, that's the most important aspect of this, I suppose. No, it, it literally has gone full blown spastic. Just think about it. Started off going, it's xenophobic to be commenting on this, uh, you know, to be blaming China and their practices. This is all about xenophobia. This is fear mongering, too. Ah, we need to rob everything. My God, where's the toilet paper? I need more toilet paper. It's just gone like that, like from zero to a hundred spastication. I know you're not supposed to use the word retarded anymore, but I think spastic has got to the imbecile stage now. You know, imbecile used to be a technical term before retardation. Um, but no one says spastic anymore, either as a proper term or as a derogatory term. So I think spastic's been out of the game long enough for me to bring it back, and it's totally fine, like imbecile. Do you know what I'm saying? So you can say imbecile and spastic now, I'm pretty sure. So I would say spastic. I love that word, spastic. Yeah, we've just gone spasticated. So the moral is, well, there is no fucking moral. There's no easy decisions about this. Do not judge any decisions based on who did them. Because that's just stupid. Unless it is someone who, who is literally a complete retard, a spastic, a, a twat, an imbecile, whoever. I don't know. But, but, and, and, and seriously, don't, um, don't take this kind of thing lying down. Like, don't go outside. Don't congregate in groups of people. We're going to fine you a thousand pounds and arrest you. Like, really? You, you, it's, that's the thing. You think because people want to curb immigration and bring the numbers down, people, and people want, want to have autonomy, you know, people don't want to be governed by the EU anymore. Apparently that's worrying, and that's a sign of the rise of fascism. Apparently that's a sign of fascism. But being told to stay inside your own fucking house and told that if you've got a cough, we're going to fine you a thousand pounds and imprison you. Apparently that's not. That's... That's okay. And apparently Boris Johnson should be shutting everything down. And that's calls from the left-wing side, okay? The ones who are apparently against fascism. Yeah, everything should be shut down uh, to be safe. And the army should be patrolling the streets and, and shooting the sick in their beds. Fucking nonsense. So you need to... If you, if you don't see the bits that are uncool because you just want to pick and choose what is cool and what isn't, then you're, you, you have no right to talk. And you deserve to live under the totalitarian regime. And you deserve to go to the fucking gulag that you support. Go to the gulag that you've asked for. Seriously, because I'm not. But you can go there. By all means, you ask for this shit. You literally don't even know what fascism is. You don't even know the real signs of totalitarianism. You don't. There it is. It's there. It's happening. If you wanted the example for it, but no, you'd rather it be about the European Union. And God knows what. About people not liking grooming gangs and shit you think that's the sign of a fascist totalitarian government really that's interesting isn't it that's the sign isn't it not the one if you're coughing we're going to arrest you find you a thousand pounds I know I keep saying this but I'm just wondering if it's going to drill into you at any point soon I'm just wondering do you know what I mean because this is what you asked for you've, you've applauded it and you're fine with it I'm not but then I ain't coming back, so. Anyway, that's the last time I'm going to mention of it. But we'll keep mentioning that fact, just so everyone knows. If you want more entertaining stuff, if you want some more lighthearted stuff, if you want to have some fun, please do it. Just subscribe to my Planet Rebus channel. And uh, go over to my Twitch streams, because they're good fun. Um, but by all means... If you just like this kind of thing, yeah, you can stay here. I'll try and make it always a bit more fun. Just think for yourself, for goodness sake. And uh, send me a donation.
And uh, if you're female and want it, you want to send me your underwear, that's absolutely fine. Because um, it saves me having to buy my girlfriend underwear. So, pretty up for that. And if you're going to send me any death threats, I'd like it in old fashioned form on oh, a piece of paper with cut out newspaper clippings. Not by email or in the comment section or something like that, because that's just. Pfft. It doesn't really make me feel threatened. It's, there's no effort. You know, if I want to fear for my life, I want to have something to hold in my hand and go, fucking hell, this person may actually kill me because they've made the effort to write a letter. People just don't write letters anymore, and I think that's important. Okay.